It's my pleasure today to welcome Matthias Bolliger, director of photography based in Germany. How are you? Hi, Nino. Welcome from Hamburg to Vienna. Hi. Um, Matthias, before we talk about the ProRes RAW recording from the Panasonic S1H, maybe you can give us a very brief introduction uh, of who you are. Yes. I'm a DOP, working mostly for feature film work, for um, cinema, for TV series. Um, as well, at the moment, I'm uh, prepping a TV show, a new series, uh, which will happen uh, this autumn in Berlin. So looking there as well forward to use the S1H as an additional cam. So we are back on track. We actually met the first time a couple of years ago when you were um, doing like, I think I, uh, as part of a Panasonic event, you were talking about using the Varicam 35, uh, their, you know, top level camera. And then we kept in touch with all the new uh, Panasonic updates as well. And, you know, just giving feedback to Panasonic as well with our experience. Now, we have now the S1H, uh, which is about to receive its public uh, uh, firmware update for a ProRes RAW output to be recorded on the Ninja 5 uh, Atomos recorder. Now, um, we both, both Cinema 5D and you had the chance to actually test uh, the recording with a beta version of that. Uh, I think before we actually talk about um, your experiences, let's play the clip that you shot and then let's just uh, talk about your observations. Okay, we just saw the clip. Um, what can you tell us about your experience with the S1H in general and then with the new update in particular? First, maybe a bit of background. Um, there's quite a story with uh, the Panasonic line, uh, lineup. Um, I started with the Varicam 35 and then the Varicam LT. Especially, I was hooked by the dual native ISO option, having uh, a higher ISO range or two native ISO to work with. So I was looking forward to bring this feature to a smaller form factor, which brought me to the uh, GH5 first and then to the S, uh, S1H. And um, there are quite some features I like in this camera. And uh, as I mentioned, I will want, want to use it for, as a Z cam as well, then later on for my own work. But um, opening up for raw workflow, this was interesting. I joined up with uh, Louise Temsfeld, um, in colorist from Hamburg. So to find a bit, uh, to find out more about um, working with the sensor data coming out of the camera. So what was your test setup for this? I was thinking how to bring up um, a setup which will challenge the camera anyway and then to show a bit the differences between internal and external uh, recording. So I asked uh, my friend Casper, uh, uh, a nearby photographer, if I could go to his photo studio, to his attic to have a little setup because it's quite a dark place there. Uh, there's a, a table on a, on a window and I brought in Natalia Janssen, a young act actress from Hamburg, to have four points to test with her as a model first to have her in this environment which is uh, quite high contrast on the other hand it's, it's a low light situation so what about noise with the two recordings then skin tones uh, was a topic for me and in the end texture so detail resolution especially for the 6k recording as well in raw i mean the s1h is a camera that actually does kind of very well uh, in, with internal recording already especially comparing other mirrorless cameras uh, you can see that this is really a camera that 
you know they they took it they took the video function seriously which is not something you can say about every mirrorless camera on the market um what what were your findings do you think that the prores raw recording uh did bring you an additional step up in quality in general it's a bit a question of where you want to end with what you are you are doing I did this side-by-side -side test, which we can see here now. The side-by-side -side test having uh, on the one side the 6K recording uh, of the clip, which we saw from the beginning. And on the other side, on the right side, you see the internal recording directly in 4K, not 6K of course, 4K, 4 to 2 10 bit internal recording on the SD card. And to bring it to post-production, really see where are the differences. And that was a challenge I wanted to bring in and uh, you see quite both recordings did well comparing uh, the situation. It was sometimes hard to see by eye what's going on because the contrast is quite high between the small little light uh, from the window which is quite constant uh, lighting from outside so that's a fair uh, comparison and on the other side um, uh, a harsh environment for a camera no support when the actress lifting up the paper you see really see what the bounce the real bounce is doing and though there are no electrical lights or no uh, additional fi uh, fill coming in but the question in the end is where you want to use it for if users are going to hd or uh, uhd 2 or 4k i think uh, Holding the small form factor of the camera up is uh, uh, a big uh, gain as well, so that you get a very well uh, internal recording built in in the camera. If somebody want to have the, uh, the most out of it and go into 6K recording, of course you can break up now the bottleneck uh, because uh, most of you will know that 6K internal recording is for 2.0 10-bit uh, long up structure, so that can be broken up uh, with going to RAW. But as you uh, see as well, you gain something resolution-wise, so you have um, the additional of, uh, 6K resolution there. You get a bit more uh, of details, but as well on a price, and the price is, a, is the higher noise level. On the other hand, you have the 4K internal recording, um, it's 4K, so it's a bit less resolution, that's for sure, but it's somehow pleasing as well because you are working here in a, uh, in a, in a more compressed way. Your the data rate is, uh, I think, a six or eight times smaller, but you're getting the most out of it. So you have a, uh, you have a, bit, more, a bit more of a soft impression on the skin tones which as well can be very nice so the question is how much you want to do or what do you want to do with the pictures like uh, always in life but what's important to understand is that on the raw raw data side we're talking about a 12-bit linear signal and on the internal recording about a 4k logarithmic uh, recording so these are two worlds which we compare here in some kind of way so there is no way right now, at least with a beta firmware, that you tested to record V-Log externally in ProRes RAW, right? Uh, let's say that would be a wish and a question as well to Atomos um, that beside the RAW recording, why not to open it up to high quality 6K recording as a video file, not as a RAW file. RAW file, uh, it's possible, of course. Um, but then one terabyte of data uh, l uh, lasts 45 minutes of recording time, which is uh, qu qu quite, uh, quite something. Um, but why not opening up and having 6K444 or even 6K422 uh, recording um, or enabling it to do it? I uh, would be a customer to do so. Absolutely, because as we all know, also ProRes RAW is... I mean, it is being extended to more non-linear editing platforms, but it's still a little bit limited uh, because you can't actually use it inside DaVinci Resolve, for example, yet. And what you're referring to is to, like with bigger camera bodies uh, from all manufacturers, actually, uh, if you have a RAW out, you can decide whether you will record that RAW signal in a raw format or not but in this case with this new raw from hdmi as opposed to sdi 
um, it's it's kind of lo you're locked into the the ProRes RAW workflow. So the question is, will they open this up? Uh, uh, will Atomos open this up to to recording in a different format in the future? So that would definitely be something that's very interesting. Yeah, absolutely, because we are we are now on a, some ground or some kind of battlefield somehow of a format war going on between different companies and all third party manufacturers being somehow infected or or involved in it. That, um, for example, you can see here DaVinci Resolve, but these are not the original data opened up there because it's not possible. And they're having this format war between raw formats at least, um, Blackmagic on the one hand and Apple probably on the other hand, is, uh, it's quite a burden. It's, it's never good for the customer to have these format wars, so let's hope it will be <laughs> resolved eventually. If, if I see the side by side, uh, not in full resolution, uh, I have to say it looks very, very similar to my eye. Um, of course, I think that is the biggest takeaway from this, um, that the only way to actually use 6K from the S1H, 6K, uh, 16 by 9, I think, right, uh, from, from the S1H is by recording it externally, uh, because the internal 6K, you can do it, but it's 420, and that's a very, very high compression. So most people would probably resort to the 4K recording. So if you're after resolution, um, the external ProRes RAW recording is the way to go. The question is, do you want to take it on if you know, you're know you not after the resolution? Uh, because um, we still haven't tested it yet and it doesn't make sense to test the dynamic range yet because this is a beta version firmware, we have to say. This is not something public and there is a reason why Panasonic decided to pull uh, the original release date of the RAW update uh, and, and work a little bit more on it uh, to refine it. Um, but we will definitely test it once the production firmware is out. We will look at the dynamic range of the S1H again, uh, but also with recording externally um, in ProRes RAW. You have to understand that whatever recording is on the back end of it, even raw, you can only be as good as your sensor is. It's not meaning that this sensor is not good, but there are limits to what the sensor can provide. And, and you can put all the data in a container and bring it there, but in the end it has to be visible in the editing or in the grading system to really bring it alive. So the, the sensor limits as well your raw. That's, that, that's for sure and that's, um, that's important to understand, to understand uh, one system. Exactly. It's the sensor and it's also the processing behind the sensor, what it is capable of. And, uh, I guess we both were hoping to for a little bit more highlight recovery uh, on the beta firmware, to be honest. But um, yeah, let's see if they can enhance it. Um, they will work actually on... Uh, there were some small issues with highlights that we both saw um, that uh, Panasonic confirmed that they are actually working on uh, for the final release of uh, the firmware. I think it's, it's, it's fair enough to share that. Um, so let's see what changes. Looking forward. Okay, thank you so much, Matthias. Uh, maybe let's also talk to your colorist, Luise, who actually is very experienced with uh, dealing with, um, of course, uh, color grading and, and, and just getting the best out of the footage that we uh, cinematographers are able to shoot with these cameras. Um, working with linear footage is uh, something that you have to get used to as a colorist, uh, because usually in most productions, people shoot logarithmic material. So managing that uh, was quite a, uh, yeah, it was a little bit tricky in the beginning. Uh, in the end, we figured it out and um, tried both ways, uh, color managed and unmanaged workflow. Uh, and looking at the results, I must say that uh, ProRes RAW, first of all, um, as a data set is uh, quite stunning in, in, uh, in aspects of data rate. And looking visually at that, which most interests us uh, as colorists, um, it was a little bit crispier. So what I did was I tried to uh, scale the, the footage, the high resolution footage, to a native pixel to pixel representation. And comparing that with VLOG also uh, representing it pixel to pixel. And looking at that, you get directly aware that um, 
that the progress raw is an RGB linear footage that has a diff slightly different pixel definition, which is due probably to uh, a lower compression rate. I am not really sure what type of compressor is used. Uh, it's, it's probably a little secret as well, um, let it there. But um, uh, in VLOG you have, uh, you have the pixel definition and also the edges of the pixels are a little bit softer and smoother. Um, that is a question of look, where do you want to get to? Uh, what, uh, what image actually are you trying to achieve? So um, that all has a pro and contra. So uh, you cannot really say one is better than the other. But um, I think it is uh, important to test uh, ProRes War before using it and uh, getting aware of these issues and asking yourself whether you want to see that in a grading suite or not. Um, first, we tested it in SDR, but we also had an HDR capable mon monitor, a reference monitor uh, available in our grading suite. So that, um, that was very interesting uh, because uh, I must say that the dynamic range is given by the sensor. The camera is actually making available that dynamic range. So sometimes when you're on the internet you need to be a little bit careful when people are speaking about dynamic range as a certain characteristic of a codec. That is not necessarily true. When your sensor clips, then th this information is not available anymore. Back maybe a little bit to pixel definition, um, you see that textures in, in, in the image, of, in the ProRes RAW image, come out a little bit more. You have a little bit more of detail available there and also a little bit more of nuances and gradations, especially when you're looking at skin tones. I think that is always an important fact. Uh, what I also observed, what Matthias said earlier, is the, is the noise, noise behavior. So uh, when you look at it, um, how uh, the image is actually being processed, it is very natural to say that the ProRes RAW has a little higher noise behavior than the VLOG. It is very natural because you have one-to-one -one these RGB data. So uh, due to a lower compression, this noise is not being suppressed by any parameter. So if you compare the footage side by side, like the internal footage that Matthias recorded with the external one, um, do you think the, uh, you mentioned that there's a little bit more gradation and more detail, but uh, did you feel like there is more dynamic range visible? Uh, no, uh, as I said, the dynamic range is not coming from the codec or from the format itself. So the digital data set that I'm having and that I'm decoding and representing, bring it, bringing it back into an electronic and then in an optical output, a visual output, has nothing to do with what actually the camera is capable to capture uh, as dynamic range. So the dual native ISO uh, parameters are, are crucial in that, in that sense. Okay, well, I think it's just a lot of people when they hear about RAW, you know, they're used to going with their photos into Lightroom and, you know, like um, kind of pushing the, the highlights down and, and lifting the shadows and actually seeing more on an SDR monitor in the end than they were able to do before. That's why I'm asking this. So uh, it's basically uh, in, in RAW photos, often a lot of details are buried in in invisibility in a way until you actually release it um, for for the final final processing of the photo i think that's why a lot of people are asking this question i mean uh, of course um, especially i mean the, the entire workflow of having a logarithmic image i think is also correct me if i'm wrong but as far as i understand it's 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 kind of a helper for us to display a higher dynamic range on an SDR monitor, which are 99% of all monitors. And even the HDR ones are not really HDR because they can only show like 10 stops or so, not the 14, 15 stops that the cameras are capable of shooting. Yeah, uh, if you have a linear data set, it's basically pretty simple if you consider what your 
electro-optical transfer function is. So that means how uh, or what characteristics your display have. Um, if I would show you that in a graphic, it would be uh, very comprehensible. Um, but in the end, actually what counts is that linear is uh, so, so straight that it will look clipped on your monitor. So if you have um, not a color management involved, you will directly see it clips, but the data is there. You can um, recover that. But it, that is not necessarily a, a characteristic of ProRes RAW. It is just a characteristic of linear footage. And as for logarithmic curves, um, it, it has not as much to do uh, with, uh, with how you represent something on your monitor. It has to do with how you can use your bit, sc your bit scale. So if you have, for example, 10 bit scale, um, you have uh, 1,023 code values and you're using these more in correspondence to how your eye sees and how you, the sensitivity of your eye um, is constructed. So that is, um, that is actually the issue with logarithmic curves. Yeah, interesting. Well, I think um, we all hope that ProRes RAW will get a bit more documentation uh, it seems uh, like a little bit of a black box for many of us because I think the idea is to have a raw format, a compressed raw format that is easy to deal with, that is not consisting of a lot of individual files and stuff like that, something that you can directly edit, which is the case. Um, but we don't really know what's going on because as you mentioned in the beginning, we don't know how it's compressed and so on. So I think... And then, then there are only a handful of cameras so far, like the S1H, that are actually capable of outputting something that can be recorded in ProRes RAW. So the the experience is still limited. So um, if if Atomos and 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 the manufacturers of the cameras are listening, we just you know, and Apple, of course, I think we are all hoping for a bit more documentation in order to be able to get the best out of the data that we have there. Yes, uh, especially what concerns the SDK. So if we look at other raw formats, they uh, usually deliver in an SDK where you have par parameters like exposure or ISO. Um, that is also, I must say, a sort of post-processing. So something that um, happens on top of the raw image. But uh, it gives you some fidelity and some, um, some sen sensitivity to the footage that you're shooting. And that was not available at all in my grading system. Um, which I missed a little bit, but in the end, um, I use my tools. <laughs> okay, let's leave it at that and let's hope um, that the final release of the S1H uh, firmware update that enables the, the raw output will be available for everybody soon. It will be a free update, which is nice. That was not the case for all those updates from Nikon, for example. Um, I think they charged some uh, money for that. So Panasonic will make this available for free, which is nice, and make this already quite capable camera even more capable. Thank you, Luise, and uh, also thank you, Matthias. And uh, best wishes to Hamburg, and thanks, everybody, for watching. Stay tuned to Cinema 5D for more about raw video codecs and a lot of other things relating to cameras and all the nerdy stuff we're talking about. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks. Yeah.